What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to write MapReduce jobs in Python for distributed systems like Hadoop clusters using a package called MRJob. So let us get right into it. Alright so we're going to learn how to write jobs for distributed systems like Hadoop clusters in Python today using a paradigm called MapReduce and MapReduce is its own way of thinking when it comes to formulating tasks for machines because the essential idea is that when working on a cluster we have multiple nodes, multiple systems working on the same thing however no single system has all the information because of course the task is split up across the systems so every system is going to have part of the solution part of the result part of some temporary side information they're not one system because usually we have one system all the data is in that one system if we have a dictionary or a list with some temporary data that we keep track of this one system has all the information if we split work across multiple systems they need to somehow coordinate themselves or we need to coordinate them so that they exchange the data in a way that um, leads to the solution and for this we have the map reduce paradigm where we basically split up the tasks into mapping phases and reducing phases so we have map reduce map reduce if you have multiple steps or you could also have just map reduce 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 um, and the basic idea is that you take some information and you yield some information out um, to the next phase now before we get too abstract here I'm going to give you we're going to get right into the code and I'm going to start with examples so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to count the words of review text this is like the hello world example of MapReduce if you look up MapReduce tutorials you're going to see that this is what everyone's doing counting words uh, we're going to use the Amazon review data set part of it so I went to this Amazon review data and I downloaded the musical instruments data set which is this JSON file here. So we have review idea, uh, reviewer ID, we have ASIN, we have name of the reviewer and stuff like that. And the important thing for us here is the review text this year. So the review text here. For all these texts, we wanna count the words and for all these reviews, we wanna get in the end, the total amount of um, word counts for each word or the total word counts for each word would be a, a better way of uh, putting this. So if we want to have multiple systems working on this, we need to do this in a certain way. And in the mapping phase, what we would do here, just an abstract idea here without putting this into code is we would take a text. So let's say we have a mapper. One system has a mapping phase right now. It gets some information like, hello world, this is my review. What this mapper would do now is the mapper would extract all the individual words and instead of saying now, um, let's process the next data set and see how many occurrences we have there and then let's sum it up. It's just going to say I have one hello, I have one world, I have one this, I have one is, one my, one review. And of course, um, if I have multiple words and it is awesome, for example, in this case, I would have is two times. However, we're still not going to sum up anything. We're going to just say one hello, one world, one this, one is, one my, one review, one and, one it, and again, one is, not two is. Um, the job of collecting all this information and summing it up will be part of the reducer. So this will just yield something like hello, one, world, one, this, one, and so on and so forth. And then, this will happen for all the mappers, for all the rows, and then we have a lot of different hellos probably, and a lot of different worlds probably, and a lot of different this probably. And some words are going to occur only once. So for example, the once might occur only once. Um, and then what the reducer is going to do is it's going to group everything by the key, which is going to be the word hello, and it's going to sum it up. So in this case, we have, I think, seven. So it would combine this into hello seven, for example. That is the basic idea and this can be done across multiple systems because we don't need to keep track of any information. Every mapper in and of itself just um, just screams out this information and then all of this is combined in a reducer. So we're going to do all of this here in Python using a package called mrjob, uh, which is MapReduce job. So we're going to just say uh, command line pip install mrjob. I also like to call it Mr. Job sometimes, even though this is definitely not accurate. Um, 
But this package allows us to formulate tasks using this MapReduce paradigm and then automatically if you run this on a Hadoop cluster, it's going to use multiple systems. So if you run this locally, it's going to use your one system, it's going to simulate uh, a cluster, but um, you can run this on a Hadoop system and then it's going to automatically use the resources there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to import, first of all, a regular expression or the RE module for a regular expression so that we can extract the tokens uh, from the individual texts. Then we're also going to import JSON in order to process the JSON file. And then we're going to say from mrjob.job, we're going to import mrjob. And from mrjob.step, we're going to import mrstep. So <clears throat> every job is going to be structured or every job you write is structured in a class. So we're going to create here now a class word counter, which is going to inherit from mrjob. And here now you can overload or overwrite certain functions, certain methods that are defined in MR job. So for example, the mapper, the mapper function or the mapper method, uh, the reducer method, the combiner method, the reducer final method, and so on, the reducer init method, the mapper init method. There are many different functions. You can look them up in the documentation if you want to. But for our purposes, we're just going to use a mapper and a reducer and maybe a combiner to just speed things up. A combiner is essentially something that comes in between the mapper and the reducer. It doesn't change anything about the result. It doesn't add any functionality per se. It just prepares the data already for the reducer while the mapper is still working. Uh, and it can lead to a significant performance increase if you have enough data, but it doesn't really change anything in terms of what is happening to the data. So we're going to start here by defining a mapper. For this, we pass the self keyword and then also key and value. So a key value pair, but since we're starting now, we don't have a key. We're only going to process a value, which is going to be the JSON file uh, line by line. So we're going to have this reviews JSON file here that we talked about and we're going to process it line by line. How are we going to do that? We're going to say review um, equals JSON loads, load S, um, and we're going to pass here the value. So the value is going to, to be a line of the file. So we take the JSON file, we take one line of that file, that is going to be our value. This is why we use the load S function and not the load function, because we're not loading a file, we're loading just a string adjacent string and um, this is going to be the full review. From this review now we want to get the review text which is going to be review and then review text. This is just a key that we have here for each uh, for each row, this one. Uh, and this is going to give us the review text itself. Now for this review text now we want to extract all the tokens, all the words. So what we're going to do is we're going to say tokens equals regular expression dot find all and we're going to provide a simple pattern, simple regex pattern backslash B then word plus so W plus with a backslash before. So backslash B backslash W plus backslash B to basically get the isolated tokens, the isolated words. And then we're going to just say we want to apply this on review text dot lower. So we're going to not care about the case of the words, we're just going to do this in a case insensitive way. Uh, and this is going to get now all the tokens from this particular from this one particular review text. Um, and what we want to do now is we want to say for token in tokens, we want to yield from the mapper an instance for this token, it occurs one time. So we're going to say yield token one. Again, remember, this is the mapping phase. So we take just text. This is what we had before this Hello World example. Hello World. This is my review or whatever the text was. Um, what we do now is we just go through the individual tokens and we yield them with a one so that we can later on sum them up. So we have hello one world one and so on. And then later on, we have this for all the different texts, and we can sum them up to count the words. So this is what we're doing here in the mapper. And the reason we're using the yield keyword is just because uh, MR job works this way, it uses generators. And if you don't know what generators are, and what the yield keyword is, you can watch my video, uh, you can just go to my channel and type generators, and you will find a video explaining what the yield keyword does. Uh, but essentially, it's just the way that MR job is structured. So we need to yield a token and a one. 
uh, or in this case, we yield a token or the token and a one to count this word as occurring one time. And if it occurs multiple times in the same text, we're just going to count it one time, multiple times. Uh, that's the basic idea. And then in the second phase, we want to reduce the value. So reduce takes key and values as a plural here. So now we group by the key, this happens automatically, we group by the key, we have all the values. So if we have hello occurring 20 times, we have one, 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 20 times for the key hello. So um, it would look something like that, we would get here as a key, hello. And then as a value, we would get a list of ones, depending on how many times we yield it, hello, one. Um, so what we can do here to just yield the result to just yield what we are actually interested in, is we can say yield, and then key some values. This will then uh, actually, we should call this reducer not reduce. Um, because this is an instance of a reducer and not just a reduce function. Um, and this is what the function is going to do. So it's going to always take uh, the word with how many ones we have, and then we're going to sum it up. And this is going to give us the result. Now to speed this up, we can just go ahead and say combiner self key values. And then we can write the same code. Again, this combiner, every logic you have in here is nothing you can trust because this combiner just prepares whatever the mapper yields for the reducer. So this basically starts reducing sort of um, before we get to the reducer even uh, just to to prepare some work for it so that it doesn't have to start only after the mapper is finished. So that's a basic word counting script here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say def step or steps, the plural. Um, and here we're going to define now the steps that our MR job, our map reduce job is going to have. So we're going to return a list. And in this list, we're going to have an MR step. This is one step. And one step consists of one mapping phase, one reducing phase and the stuff in between like the initialization, the final, the combiner and stuff like that. But in each step, we only have one mapper and one reducer, you cannot have multiple mappers or reducers in one step. So what we say here is we say mapper equals self dot mapper, reducer equals self dot reducer. We don't call the functions, we just pass them. Um, and now basically, we have this script here that would take this JSON file and process it. Now, all we have to do is we have to say if name equals main, I mean, we don't have to do that. But this is a best practice thing that you should always do. Uh, we're going to just say word counter dot run. And now what we need to do is we need to run this script with the parameter reviews dot JSON so that it knows actually what the value is uh, that we feed into the mapper. So we're going to run this from the command line, I'm going to navigate to this working directory here. And I'm going to say Python main py, let me just zoom in a little bit here. Python main py reviews dot JSON. And you can see now running step one of one, if you run this on a Hadoop cluster, it will be split across the different nodes. So this of course, doesn't make a lot of sense to run this locally in that way, because I just have one system, but the same script can just be run on a Hadoop cluster, and you're going to get the results. <coughs> so uh, you can see here, that we get the word counts, but you can see also that this is not sorted by the count, it's sorted by the word. So if we are interested in sorting this by the count, we could rewrite our uh, class here to sort this with a second reducer. But then of course, we also have to change the way uh, that the values are passed. So what we can do here is we can say that the first reducer will not yield the key and the sum uh, as the key and the sum, but it will yield nothing. So none, and it will then yield some values and key. Uh, now, this is still grouping everything up, but we now have a different structure where we don't have um, this key that we need to uh, that we need to pay attention to. But we have just a, a value pair here. So two values in a tuple. 
um, when we have the sum and we have the key. And now what we can do is we can define a second reducer. We can call this reducer sorter or something like that, which takes key values. Uh, and what we want to do in this reducer is we want to say for count and key in values, because remember the values that we get here now um, are all these, um, these values and keys. And we want to sort them actually. So we don't want to say in values, but in sorted values. And if you want to have them in descending order, so you, you want to have the, the most common ones first, you would say reverse equals true. The problem is if we do that in the terminal, we're going to see only the bottom. So we're going to see only the uh, smallest count. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to not reverse the sorting order. But of course, if you want to have the top uh, occurrences first, you would have to say reverse true. Uh, and here we're, we're going to just yield now again, count and key like this. And all we need to do now is we need to define a second map reduce step, which is going to only have a reducer. And this is going to be self dot reducer sorter. And the basic idea is now we take each line from the JSON, we map it, we reduce it, we take that result and we reduce it again, uh, with this reducer, which basically just sorts everything. Uh, what's the problem here, maybe static. Uh, yeah, could be static, but it's not going to be static. So if I run this now, you can see we have step one out of two. And once step one is done, we're going to go to step two, and it's going to sort everything. There you go. You can see the is the word that occurs the most often I a and it and so on. And you can do a bunch of different things with this paradigm, you can do very complex things, you can have multiple jobs actually communicating with each other. So you can have one job that does something, then it produces a file, then it takes it into the next job, you can have uh, five different steps here, you can have combiners, reducers, actually, I didn't use the combiner. And notice right now self dot combiner. I don't think that we're going to notice a massive speed up here. But But yeah, you can use this paradigm to do a lot of different things. And all you do everything you do here in MapReduce with MR job can just be run on a Hadoop class uh, cluster. And it's going to produce the result way faster because you have multiple systems working in this way. And this is compatible with distributed systems because you don't have anything that you store locally, I don't have a list that I store somewhere that all the systems need to know about. I have everything. Um, independently where I just yield stuff and then it's being reduced and then we have the final result. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.